Animalistic instincts always create some of the darkest characters in anime. If we take a closer look at the idea of revenge, it is nothing more than an attempt to restore someone's superiority. Every revenge story involves the killing of a villain to ensure that you've finished the threat forever. We usually see it as something personal, but the backstories are always traumatic and add motivations for the revenge mission. Regardless, revenge is both personal and also the killing blow to all your fears. Jack Hanma grows as a character with this popular trope that we have seen over over and over again across the world. But why is Jack Hanma's revenge personal? Why does he go on a suicide mission to dethrone Yujiro Hanma as the strongest fighter in the world? The circumstances of Jack Hanma's birth make his revenge story extremely personal to the entire Baki saga. And his methods to reach his end goal always tell you that defeating Yujiro would end all his fearful trauma. His storyline unravels some of the most disturbing facts about Yujiro's character. At the same time, it also builds Jack Hanma's character, although in a highly lethal way. Let's understand this complex development of Jack Hanma today by unraveling his physiology. After all, you don't just become the titanium teeth-biting master of Baki without some twisted motivations. How is Jack Hanma related to Baki? How are they different from one another? Both Jack Hanma and Baki share a lot of things in common. At the same time, they have two completely different mindsets in the battlefield. Jack Hanma and Baki are related by blood and are half-brothers, and their motivations in the Baki series are the same, just with a slight difference. Jack Hanma was born to a Canadian secret agent named Diane Neal. The tragic circumstances of his birth tied Jack Hanma to his father, Yujiro. Back in the days of the Vietnam War, Diane Neil was assigned to eliminate Yujiro, but we all know how cutting Yujiro can be. The mission never came to pass and Yujiro figured out Diane Neil's real mission. Yujiro was beyond angry about her deception and raped her during the Vietnam War. As a result, Jack Hanma was conceived by Diane Neil, but unlike Baki's mother, Diane Neil was not killed by Yujiro and she survived her tragedy. After surviving her assault, Diane Neil gave birth to a skinny boy named Jack Hanma. You would be surprised to know that Jack Hanma Hanma was never the muscular, biting animal of the Maximum Tournament from the get-go. Jack Hanma was seen fighting in the ring and our very own Baki have the same motivations. It is perhaps the only thing that is the same between these two characters, apart from a horrible father of course. Jack Hanma and Baki share the same desire to replace their father Yujiro as the strongest fighter known to mankind. While Jack wants to avenge the rape of his mother, Baki wants to avenge the death of his mother. Yujiro was somewhat present in Baki's life even though it was never in a good way and it led to Baki witnessing his mother's murder. Jack Hanma, on the other hand, has been gunning for revenge since his childhood, and Yujiro has never been in his life as a father. Jack and Baki's fighting styles, on the other hand, are just poles apart. Jack Hanma is not considered the smartest fighter in the series, while Baki fights with technical finesse. Their motivations might be borderline the same, but their bodies are anatomically different. Yet, there's something of the Hanma blood that they both share. Let's take a closer look at these differences and the Hanma bloodline traits in Jack Jack Hanma. Was Jack always as jacked as he is now? How did he become so strong? Jack Hanma has always harbored his desire for revenge against Yujiro from the start of his life. Realizing the ugly truth of his birth and the monstrosity of his father, it only set Jack on his suicidal mission towards Yujiro, and in extension, it led Jack to his half-brother Baki. Jack Hanma's dedication towards his vengeance defies everyone else's motivations to fight in the Baki saga. Jack has been training since his skin and bones days. Jacked off in punched sandbags for 12 hours at once in the gym. If this wasn't enough, he just didn't know when to stop pumping weights to build his muscles. Jack Hanma believed that no amount of normal and everyday training would help him to get the strength to defeat his father. But in this rigorous and borderline destructive training regime, Jack Hanma's body took a toll on itself. Never giving rest to his body and just exercising hampered the muscle fibers' ability to redevelop and grow stronger. Jack was simply tearing his muscles non-stop and never letting it recover and grow layers of stronger muscles. This is how his revenge turned into madness. And finally, a series of enhancements created a whole new set of problematic solutions for Jack Hanma. Yujiro is of the opinion that the Hanma bloodline traits are as good as absent in Jack Hanma. To Jack's misfortune, this shows in his skinny body and it only fuels his desire to train harder. But training like a maniac doesn't really help Jack. Jack fails to realize the logic of physical training, relying on his own obsession to get the best results 
in the quickest time. This leads him to take his obsessive madness to the next level. As training fails his overworked muscles, Jack Hanma meets Dr. John. Dr. John has harbored a fascination with Yujiro and the strength of the Hanma bloodline. Well, we've all heard about how a super serum drug can always go sideways. That is exactly what Dr. John does for Jack Hanma with his X4 special drug. This special drug is given as a promise to Jack Hanma to give him great results. While the results look great, they come at a cost. Jack Hanma is put on a concentrated formula of steroids and the X4 drug, but as Jack's obsession is established already, he doesn't stop at the recommended dosage. Just like overdoing his physical training in the gym, Jack overdoses himself with a steroid and X4 drug and develops an addiction. So 2 plus 2 equals nasty, and an already obsessed Jack becomes increasingly unstable. His addiction for the enhancement drug goes over the limit and Dr. John feels scared about his condition. Overall, the results are delivered in the end. Jack Hanma goes through a bulky physical transformation. He puts on a thick and strong muscular body that is highly durable, but the cost for this comes in the form of his mental instability. One of Dr. John's promises to Jack was that he would be able to kill a polar bear with his bare hands, just like his father, Yujiro. But Jack's mental instability shows itself when he kills the polar bear and makes the death highly disturbing and agonizing to endure. As for his performance in fights, it's equally enhanced and every bit brutal in the Baki series. Every fight in the series shows Jack Hanma tearing away at opponents at lightning speeds. It's too fast to detect and too strong to recover from. Jack has increased speed and sheer brute strength to decapitate his opponents. Jack usually relies on these two factors, his enhanced physical strength and speed. Together, Jack is the best when it comes to beating his opponents to a pulp. This strategy works effectively in start to mid-level fights with Kengo Misaki and Alexander Gallen, but pounding opponents like a punching bag can only take Jack so far in the Baki series. The fierce and fast-biting technique works as a good stealth attack, but Jack cannot keep up with the technically advanced fighters of Baki. A long match with a seasoned and technically brilliant Baki makes it very difficult for Jack to last in the arena, so brute force and fast jabs can only go on till a certain period of time in a fight. Technically powerful fighters can easily test Jack's patience and nudge him to show his weak spots eventually. Jack Hanma is so consumed by his obsession that he only knows one fight club rule, to fight fire with fire, but someone with the right technique can find a way out of Jack's aggressive jabs and bites. Let's see how and why. Why is Jack seen as the anti-Baki in the series? Is it related to his anatomy? Speaking of technical brilliance, Baki stands tall over all his opponents. His strength is undeniably supreme, but his technique and its effectiveness make a huge difference in every fight. This strategic fighting method gives Baki an undisputed reputation in the series. His half-brother Jack Hanma, on the other hand, is the complete opposite of Baki. Technical superiority has never been the ally of Jack. We only see him using his brute strength until the end moments of the fight. Unlike Baki, Baki, Jack Hanma believes it is only using brute force to pound his enemies until they are decapitated or terrorized by his force. The only remarkable technique that we can credit him would be his biting tactic. Jack can bite his opponents in plain sight. He could bite as fast as a bullet, hitting someone from a distance. Tokugawa had to once interrupt a fight to check if Jack was using a weapon, but this biting tactic is the one major technique Jack showcases in his fights. Jack's fights are known for his merciless punches, jabs, and disorienting assaults on his opponents. This fighting style combined with his anatomy makes him the anti-Baki of the series. He is the stark opposite of Baki in every possible way. For instance, Jack Hanma's body is a result of overdosed drug cocktails. The body is far from natural and his surgeries for more enhancements are notorious. Jack Hanma underwent a height-increasing surgical procedure to be more intimidating. Jack doesn't know when to stop and undergoes multiple boosts to improve his performance. The focus is solely on being the strongest man in the room. His application of brute force is a good offensive strategy. Ironically, similar to his father, Yujiro, but for all intents and purposes, his source of strength, stamina, durability, and endurance is simply the result of multiple surgeries and an endless supply of steroids and the X4 special drug. This chemical process has enhanced Jack's body beyond recognition and gave him dense muscles to withstand any attack. For instance, when Muhammad Ali Jr. challenged Jack to a fight, it was a brutal takedown. Jack brutalized Ali Jr. to the point of no 
return. Jack's enhanced body makes it a near impossible task for any average fighter in Baki, but Jack Hanma doesn't mind the cause of these enhancements, both on his body and his mind. Growing unstable each day, Jack Hanma's maniacal brute force becomes rabid with every fight. His physicality, anatomy, fighting style, and his mentality are just the opposite of Baki. Baki rarely gives in to mania and brutality. Jack, on the other hand, believes that beating his opponents to a pulp is the only way to win a fight. Does this strategy work well for a long time? Well, not really. The drug-fueled cocktails enhance Jack's body but also eats up his muscle strength in the process. The more he alters his anatomy, the more unstable it becomes. So Jack Hanma can only power through so many fights until someone with a lethal technique figures out his fighting pattern. This is where Jack becomes the anti-Baki. Jack was defeated by Baki due to Baki's technical and strategic superiority. Baki did not resort to using brute force to defeat Jack Hanma. Instead, it was a combination of tactical decisions used effectively with Baki's own strengths. Jack Hanma and Baki might share the same blood, but they are poles apart in every single thing. What is Jack's primary weapon? How has it improved over the course of the series? Well, we've been dropping a lot of hints so far about Jack Hanma's biting technique, so it should not be a surprise when you realize that Jack's primary weapon are his strong, sharp teeth. Jack never holds back from using his teeth, but he loves doing it in style. Right from his second match in the series, Jack uses this biting technique with super speed and in a discreet manner. For instance, Jack's face-off with the Shorinji Kempo master Kengo Misaki is just the start of his teeth-biting mayhem in the series. Throughout the fight, Kengo Misaki tries to use his Shirinji Kempo technique multiple times to defeat Jack. However, every time Kengo finishes an assault with his hand or just battering Jack with his kicks, Kengo notices that his body is bleeding. It starts with his hand, then ankles, and Kengo is unable to understand how the bleeding happens. Well, no brownie points for guessing. It's because Jack has been biting him very discreetly, and we stress on the word discreet because nobody's able to detect the exact cause for Kengo Misaki's bloody wounds. This also leads to a check on Jack to detect if he carries any weapons, but he has nothing. You can always trust Jack Hanma to go all out and that's exactly what he does by biting Kengo Misaki and ripping his limbs apart. Yes, Jack Hanma is a raging maniac with a bite force that is super fast and undetectable. His biting is by far his most unique and powerful weapon, but Jack's biting saga doesn't end here. Jack uses his biting tactic effectively to overpower the old Jujutsu master Goki Shibukawa. Even though Shibukawa gets an upper hand in a start by putting Jack in a dizzy spell of drowning, Shibukawa falls short against Jack's strength. Shibukawa tries a range of things like a brutal kick or the special weapon Aiki, but it makes no difference. Every time Shibukawa decides to fight is over, Jack has already bitten him brutally. The use of Aiki occurs twice and it only helps Jack more than Shibukawa. Ultimately, Jack has the last bite and the last laugh in the arena with his match against Goki Shibukawa. Jack and Pickle's fight is just testosterone Ronan steroids, with the most unlikely lip lock you will see in anime's history. Yet this brutal lip lock is worth discussing. During Jack and Caveman Brawler Pickle's fight, both never back down from the showdown. Jack has tried almost every punch and blow you can imagine, but Pickle still manages to bite off Jack's jaw. This scene is not at all romantic, but it is a huge defeat for Jack. Jack's specialty is the biting technique and Pickle flips this tactic on its head. But that makes no difference, Jack keeps fighting with a half-disfigured face. Later, we can see Jack face off Izui Motobe. Even though Jack wanted to fight Musashi Miyamoto, Tokugawa pitted him against Izui Motobe. This fight is really important to the character arc of Jack Hanma, as a character defined by his ferocious mania and brute strengths. Jack Hanma doesn't just back down. It is often a part of his storyline that shows how enthusiastic Jack can be for a fight. Even sustaining lethal injuries cannot tie Jack to his hospital bed. But a challenging fight, Jack will break himself if that's needed and then he'll come back with more madness and mayhem. Jack's face-off with Motobe marks a transition for his character. As we all know, Izui Motobe is notorious for his special chainmail armor made of arabid fibers. Now, did Jack stop himself from biting off a chainmail armor made of airplane-making materials? Nope, he bit off the mail with his bare teeth. Though he was successful in shredding Izui Motobe's armor, Jack lost his teeth in this process. This is where he transitions from having normal teeth to titanium teeth. Now, he's not just a jack-up maniac, 
Zodiac, but he also has the strongest teeth known to anyone in the Baki series. This leads Jack Hanma to work on creating his own style of martial arts called Godou or the Biting Path. We see a good amount of this martial arts style in Jack's fights in the Baki Rehan volumes. This deeply personal spin-off traces Jack Hanma and his growth from an obsessed fight monger to a more disciplined fighter. Jack still struggles with his inherent need to be the most powerful, but as it is noted, he understands the limitations of his body better. He relies a lot more on his titanium teeth as he has been developing his Godou fighting style. Right at the start of the Baki Rehan, Jack has a fight with an old man who bears striking resemblances to Musashi Miyamoto, but it turns out to be a one-sided fight. The face-off barely lasts for a minute as Jack stops the sword strike made on his face. The grip of his teeth is so strong that he simply bites and breaks the old man's sword into pieces, and that's where the fight ends. Everyone realizes that there's no match to the monstrous biting power of Jack Hanma. Fitter in Baki Rehan, Kosho Shinogi trains specifically to cut and break objects with a single finger. To face the abominable, biting strength of Jack Hanma, Kosho Shinogi leaves no stones unturned. So now you know, the dread of Jack Hanma's go-do bites is beyond terrifying. Can Jack respawn after being knocked out? How? Well, every fighter has a trump card saved for the end, and Jack Hanma has one called the world's strongest FU. Let's understand what he means by that. Jack Hanma is often considered as an average-minded fighter who only knows to fight hard and without pause, yet Jack has trained his body to respawn as a last attempt to survive the fight. In the end of a fight, if Jack is close to being unconscious and knocked down, he can deliver one final attack on his opponent. The best proof of this innate ability is seen in Jack's fight with Pickle. Jack and Pickle's showdown is quite the testosterone overload. Pickle gives a rally tough blow to Jack and their chokehold jaw-breaking kiss is one of the most unexpected standout moments in the Baki series. This jaw-breaking moment really kicks Jack to the edge of the arena, and he even becomes unconscious, but Pickle is unable to finish the fight. Despite seeing a beat-down Jack, Jack's resilient body resting without a flinch reminds Pickle about his past encounter with a wasp. He fears that ending Jack would bring him more suffering, so to the utter surprise of Baki and Tokugawa, Pickle retreats to his corner, but the next moment we see Tokugawa trying to touch the unconscious Jack Hanma. The second Tokugawa touches Jack's body, a huge smashing force erupts on top of Tokugawa's head. Tokugawa, Baki, and everyone in the arena are surprised at this point blank range move by an unconscious Jack Hanma. Jack has trained his body to deliver one last self-defense maneuver even when he is knocked out of his senses. Any opponent trying to touch or attack Jack in his unconscious state will instantaneously feel Jack's two middle fingers slamming into their ears, hence the name the world's strongest FU. If you still think saving an unconscious Jack would be the right thing to do, then you should consult Tokugawa first. Will Jack finally beat Pickle in the new Baki series, or will he die trying? Pickle and Jack Hanma's rivalry is like the feud between two alpha males. The caveman Pickle is perhaps the strongest, naturally built fighter in the Baki canon. He is a wild child of the forest, born and raised in the wilderness. As strong as his body can be, his moves can be equally lethal. They often take the form of various animal stances and deliver high-velocity attacks that even Jack cannot withstand. Pickle has this effect on Jack and is about to finish the fight after their infamous jaw breaking hold. For all the strength Jack had, he couldn't save his jaw from the grip of Pickle's fangs. However, even though Pickle ripped off half of Jack's face, there was no sign of pain or terror in Jack's body. Jack was definitely on his way to a knockout, but that never happened. Even after slamming Jack to the end of the arena, Pickle couldn't find the courage to make his final predatory move. Jack looks unconscious, but he could still strike the fear of a wasp in Pickle. Pickle has already tasted the wasp's resilience, quite literally we should say, and Jack's last minute resilience reminds Pickle of his phobia-type fear of wasps. As for Jack, his endurance knows no bounds. After having his jaw ripped apart and almost killing Tokugawa with his world's strongest FU, Jack is rushed to a hospital. While the doctors do their best to bandage and help Jack recover, he doesn't stop at all. As Jack comes to his senses, his mania consumes him. The fact that he has no jaw and has severe injuries doesn't change his resolve to finish the fight. As we have mentioned before, Jack's obsession to be the strongest fighter always overrides a doctor's advice. So, Jack does what he does best. He goes rushing out of the hospital to meet Pickle outside the arena, and mind you, Pickle is terrified of Jack and goes on to wonder how resilient Jack can be. A man running over his doctor's critical advice is definitely a man with a lot of strength. But as we all know, pride hurts a fighter worse than fear. Pickle has a change of heart and decides to face Jack Hanma instead of turning his back on him. Sadly, the fight doesn't work out in Jack's favor the second time either. To add salt to the wounds, Yujiro decides to be the father figure and teach 
teaches his son a lesson. Yujiro is highly disappointed in Jack and slams him down to the surface and expresses his disappointment. He asks Jack who gets defeated two times in a day. Regardless, not really a good father-son talk, Yujiro. There is a major difference between the physiology of Jack and Pickle. They have a similar level of physical strength, ferociousness, and durability, but it is important to note that Jack's strengths are artificially sourced. Unlike Pickle, Jack is a result of irregular overdose of steroids, the X-Force special drugs, relentless muscle tearing training, and countless surgeries on his body. Jack has gone too far with body modifications, has added almost two inches to his height to look intimidating in the arena. This is just one of the surgeries performed to apparently strengthen his body, but the evidence is as clear as daylight. Jack Hanma is often unable to understand that his body needs the space to heal and recover. He never hesitates to jump back into the action from his hospital bed. He is utterly blinded by his vengeance and his need to be superior. Right now, it is safe to say that Jack Hanma and Pickle's second round fight will set the expectations high. Pickle has proved twice that he can put down Jack Hanma. Jack, on the other hand, has proved that he is pushing himself to his death by overdoing his limits. Yet, Jack has always stood up again to fight over and over again. Judging by Jack's addiction for body enhancements, we can't rule out the possibility that he might go for some more surgeries or procedures. For all intents and purposes, it doesn't look like Jack Hanma or Pickle are going to fight down easily. Their round two definitely looks like one of the highly anticipated fights in the future of the Baki storyline. Pick your sides, but don't try Jack's experiments at home or your gym. Marvel's Verdict Jack's obsession for strength is as unstable as a roller coaster. His story is nothing less than a roller coaster ride either, so we urge you to go buy our Marvelous Verdict on Jack Hanma. And the verdict is, don't give up on Jack Hanma yet because nobody knows how far this raging maniac is meant to go in the Baki universe. Always remember, Jack Hanma delivers every time, no matter the cost.